Ladies and gentlemen in the Shrek Gaming Intercom video, let's discuss AMD's hope for the future of the x86, a processor known as Zen. Unfortunately, due to poor yields of 14nm, it would appear that the processor is going to be delayed until the fourth quarter 2016. Well, you say delayed, but an initial release date was never actually given. But many expected the processor to be released, let's say the second quarter-ish, maybe the third quarter at the latest. Now this is bad news for a couple of different reasons. One, us gamers want the damn thing now. Um, it means that we get less, well, competition in the marketplace. Now this also is good news for Intel, because currently of course AMD are competing against Skylake and it's fair to say that competing is a bit of a strong word. Yes, AMD's processors aren't terrible or anything like that, but it's fair to say that it, uh, Intel do have a leg up. Skylake currently, however, will be replaced in around the third quarter 2016, assuming once again there's no delay, and it will be replaced with Cable Lake. So, originally many expected Zen, then KB Lake to be released, but now it's looking like it's going to be the other way round. What's to blame? Well, Global Foundries. Global Foundries produce, as many people will know, the actual silicon, the raw silicon, but effectively they are behind their roadmap. They're behind where they expected to be at this point, which is slowing down initial production, which is obviously a bad thing. So, just to get everyone up to speed, I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the Zen architecture. But for those who are not, it's going to be quite a revolution compared to, let's say, the Excavator Core or even the Bulldozer Core. For one, AMD are boasting that it's going to have at least a 40% improvement um, in terms of instructions per clock, which is rather large. And it's going to be not just an improvement in multi-threading, but also single-threading. Most of this is because it's going to be much more Intel-like in the way it does things, which is obviously, in this case, a really good thing. The actual platform is going to be built on an AM4 platform, which is going to be dual-channel DDR4. It's going to have large improvements. For example, it's going to have high bandwidth, low-latency caching systems. It's a bit like EDRAM, which, of course, not only do Intel use, but other... Uh, power architectures use it and hell ED RAM was even a thing with the Xbox 360 with its uh, GPU So it's not new or anything like that ED RAM Now Zen eventually and we don't know when of course, but eventually Zen will be replaced with Zen Plus We don't know a whole lot of details about Zen Plus, but, it, but AMD are boasting the the release date for Zen Plus, um, I'm sorry, the performance increases for Zen Plus is going to be about 10% improved over that of the original Zen, which isn't shabby, it's pretty good really. All of this will mean that the FX line eventually will be based on the x86-64 Zen architecture, and those and the Zen will also naturally move towards Opatron process as well, and also will have APUs based on Zen, and it's a very good thing, at least in my opinion, you know, with a new processor design. Unfortunately, there's a couple of issues. Not only do we as gamers have to wait some, which is not ideal, it's not like Skylake's bad or we're in a bad position with processors. It's not like, oh my god, you know, the processor uh, market is terrible or anything like that. It's not, you know, the prices are reasonable. I do wish that uh, there were more, more cores on Skylake, but ultimately it's not a bad chip. It's not terrible. We've got a pretty decent um, alternative as well in, let's say, the 5820K. And AMD's processors are not too bad either. They're fairly cheap. You can get a lot of cores. And for some actual applications, that's... A good thing you know they're just as competitive in many applications for uh, uh, against even um, Intel's processors it is that simple however it's bad because we want you know a very competitive processor market and also it's going to be interesting to see how motherboard vendors deal with this because obviously you know new platforms new chips are what actually spur develop or rather map you know the sales of these motherboards it is that simple there's reasons you get companies like msi or gigabyte or whomever really pushing up the boat and saying hey 
this 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 thing's launched this is what we're focusing our attention on it's like that with Skylake it's like that with any uh, processor lineup even with GPUs themselves it, it's just how things work in the industry rather rather obviously so I think that's just about it for this particular video a small update for me myself and I for those who are wondering a couple of things regarding the channel there will be um, the SSD review up this weekend it got delayed mostly because to be honest it's the first time I've really done an SSD review I've done loads of GPU CPU motherboards and God knows what else on the channel haven't done an SSD at least a proper in-depth analysis of what I've done it in my own spare time benchmarking but haven't done it for the channel therefore not so much with the efficient and the way I've been benchmarking to be honest so lessons learned for next time um, and to be honest with you, also I wanted to include some additional benchmarks, which will be up this week. So the SSD review will be up. Uh, kind of sucked, but hey, sometimes you just have to say, you know what? I'm going to remember that for next time, not go down that route and kind of go from there. Second point, we're going to be having some new hardware sent over to us. Um, MSI have actually contacted us about that. So I don't know when that's coming, but hopefully not too long, uh, not too distant future, maybe a week or two. Uh, we've got to wait for other reviewers as well, because unfortunately there's limited sample, supposedly, of this hardware. And we're going to be doing Mad Max this weekend. Um, it's not going to be necessarily a graphics comparison. I will, however, be at least looking at it from a first impression standpoint, primarily because I'm kind of curious about it, because it's been so... It's caused a lot of controversy. There's a lot of critics that have panned it, and there's a lot of gamers that have loved it, and so I'm like, you know what? I'm not a critic. Kind of. I guess I kind of am. I know. I'm a YouTube thing. It, it, it's it's a thing. But I'm going to cover it. I don't know how much, but I'll, I'll cover some of it, and hopefully we can get the graphics comparison versus the PC of Metal Gear Solid. It's just been absolutely chaos the last couple of uh, weeks, but hopefully we can get some of that done. Anyway, I'm going to get going because I'm really, really hungry and I need to start making some food before I do the editing. But take care. Bye for now.